Hello everyone and welcome to Tuesday. Did breakfast stream this morning and uh, in the process of doing breakfast stream we talked quite a bit about food because I didn't have any breakfast during breakfast stream. I had been in the bathroom when the stream started so I didn't grab anything whenever I finally got upstairs and uh, I was super hungry. And we got on the on the subject of McDonald's and I ended up getting a craving for chicken McNuggets. And now that craving can finally be filled. I haven't had these in a while, but uh, sometimes it's just what you want. These are not great without sauce, wow. We have got so much hot chocolate. So later, um, I put the hot chocolate in the hot chocolate mug because I thought that's funny and appropriate. Um, First 20 stream today, so uh, I'm going to tell you about the games I played in August 2021. I did quite a few, so let's get started. First game, uh, this is one that I actually requested from the devs, uh, and I, I requested it like before the last First 20 stream, so I've been sitting on this key for a while, but they sent it like right after I did the stream, so. It's one of those situations of like, well, they're gonna have to wait till the next one. But it was Destroy All Humans. This is a game that came out in 2005. I'd always heard good things about it, but I'd never had a chance to play it. It was out on uh, like PS2 and Xbox, and it was on, I think it was on GameCube. So it came out on those platforms, never get a chance to play it, and they made a, uh, a remaster of it in 2020. And the Switch version just came out this year. So it was released onto like Xbox and PlayStation and PC. Uh, in like late 2020 and then earlier this year got released on the Switch. So I played the Switch version. As you could expect from a technical standpoint, um, it obviously doesn't look anywhere near as good as the Xbox and, and uh, PC versions, etc. Because like, you know, on modern consoles, they can really, really push what these remastered games are capable of. And you can just look at the game and tell that it's you know, it's not up to the same level as the other consoles. That being said, the frame rate seemed fine. Obviously, it's not targeting 60, it's targeting 30. Um, but it seemed fine, you know, considering that you're going to be playing it on Switch. That being said, the game itself is hilarious. I mean, I'm actually really bummed that I didn't play it in 2005, because it, it probably would have become one of my favorite games. The, uh, the humor is just on point, the voice acting is incredible, has the same voice actor uh, as uh, Invader Zim, that voice is in the game. Uh, it's just, it's really, really well written. The game is also just really fun to play. Um, one of our mods had made the comparison to uh, Mars Attacks, and that's kind of how it feels, it kind of feels like you're playing Mars Attacks in a way. Uh, highly recommended! To be honest, I, and I only played a little bit of it, and I could tell that it would just be hilarious the whole way through. So if you never get a chance to play it uh, when it came out back in 2005, definitely try the uh, the re-release. If Switch is your only option, or if you really want to play it on the go, it's fine on Switch, but um, you're going to get a lot more you know, graphical detail, obviously, out of the PC version or a, a different console. Uh, after that, we switched over to the PC, and I played a game called Overboard, Get Away With Murder. This is a game that Dan sent me yesterday, actually. Um, yesterday, during our during our morning meeting, um, Dan asked if I had played it, and I was like, no, I haven't played it. And he said, well, I'm going to send it to you so you can play it for verse 20. And man, it's really funny. It's like, there's, there's so much opportunity for comedy. It is a uh, kind of like a visual novel. It's a detective game where uh, the game starts, you've killed your husband by throwing him overboard on a ship, and you have got eight hours until you land at port and you can get away with the crime. But for eight hours, you've got to dodge questions and move around the ship and talk to people and like cover all of your bases. And uh, it's, it's intended to be played quickly, like a run, as I learned, can be very short. Um, or it can go just a little bit longer, but it's, it's not supposed to be a super long game. It's, a, it's supposed to be a game that you play multiple times to try and figure out exactly like what you should say to who and when and things you can do to try and get through it and actually beat it. Uh, but there's also multiple endings, so depending on how you do, you get a different ending. I did spectacularly. 
Uh, might I suggest that if you murder your husband on a cruise ship, that you don't immediately follow it up by murdering the steward who comes to check on you. It may not go well for you. I was just trying to do a murder run. It's gonna make it hard. It's gonna make it really, really difficult. Anyway, that was Overboard. Um, honestly feels like a really good game to bring to a, uh, like a one-off stream at some point. Very, very funny. Um, and uh, just, it, it ha has a really good tone. Like it, it's, it's lighthearted. It's lighthearted. It's not like a hardcore detective thriller thing. Like it's, it's lighthearted and it knows what it is. And uh, I actually thoroughly enjoyed it. So I gotta thank Dan for sending that my way. Um, after that, we played Omori. Omori is a game that I've been aware of for a long, long time. There was a Kickstarter, um, I think over s six years ago, five or six years ago for this game. And um, there was a lot of talk about it during the Kickstarter, just because it had a lot of Earthbound feels. Um, it, was, it was an RPG, but it was doing things just really differently, and I had a lot of people sending it my way. But then also, I actually know one of the composers for the game, uh, Jammy who uh, I've worked with on some other projects, uh, like uh, way, way back in the day, Fabius Borge, uh, as well as some other things over the years. To some extent, and I said this on the first 20, um, Jammy uh, has some level of responsibility for why I'm actually with Mao, because uh, whenever I had a crush on Mao, years and years and years ago, Jammy was the one who actually pushed me to say something and, and gave me the strength of like, hey, talk to Mao. So, I gotta thank her for that. Um, but yeah, she uh, she actually did some of the composing for the, the music in the game, and I gotta tell you, the music in the game is fantastic. The game also is fantastic. In particular, I really liked the battle system. There's a whole lot to like here. Um, it was a game made in RPG Maker. It explores a lot of mature themes, although we played about an hour and we were only just kind of hinting at that by, uh, by the very end. Um, the battle system is, is the one thing that really, really sticks out in my mind uh, because you've got uh, emotions which dictate your stats. So like you can make either yourself or another party member or the enemy uh, angry, happy, or sad. And depending on what you choose to do, it affects your stats. Like it, uh, for instance, if you're angry, your uh, attack goes up but your defense goes down. So you have to like try and weigh how exactly you want to do um, combat by way of figuring out, well, like who should be what emotion in order to proceed. It's a really, really cool idea. Uh, and then there's all, there's combat act is actually even more complex than that, but um, I really liked it, really liked the writing. And the first hour, I know it eventually gets darker, but like the first hour seems really carefree, really fun. And um, there's a lot of people in chat um, that just were really, really happy. I was, I was trying the game out and several people were like, this is my favorite game. I've just really enjoyed it. So very long first 20, um, you know, covering an entire hour of the game. But it's hard to cover anything less in an RPG, to be honest. Like a lot of times it takes a, a while for them to get rolling and for you to see all of the mechanics in the game. So we kind of had to play an hour. Um, and shout out to uh, Yuki Mizuno for sending that my way. I appreciate it. It's a game I've wanted to play since it dropped. Um, it came out in uh, December. And uh, I'm just, I'm super excited that, you know, for all of the hype that surrounded the Kickstarter years ago, it seems like it ultimately paid off because the game has done really, really well. And that's on PC and Mac, but um, it is apparently hopefully coming to Xbox, uh, PlayStation, and Switch. After Amori, uh, I jumped into a game that just launched, uh, and it was actually a game that was developed by a friend of mine, uh, Sovereign T. Uh, Sovereign T is a uh, tactical game, kind of in the same vein as uh, Advance Wars or uh, Fire Emblem, and it's about tea versus coffee. You can, you can understand how excited I was uh, when my friend reached out to me and was like, hey, you know, I've been working on this game, just finishing it up, wanted to know if you wanted to play it for, you know, your stream. And like, 
hearing the premise of the game, I'm like, this is literally perfect because, you know, the whole thing for Breakfast Stream is, is coffee versus tea. And I was like, this is basically made for our community. So uh, I'm not super, super great at these sorts of games, or maybe rather I just, it takes me a little while to like, understand everything so th there was a few bumps in the road but um the game itself is really really good and uh once i got a hold of it and and understood what i was doing um it was really fun it was really fun and it is what it sounds like you t you play as the tea princesses based on all sorts of different teas and the coffee empire is moving in and you've got to stop them and you cannot uh you have all these different troops um it's just it's really, really well done, and I was really excited to get to play something that not only was done by someone that I knew, um, but then also co so closely matched uh, uh, the interests of the community in the first place, so that was really exciting. Um, so Sovereignty was great. Then we... what was the last game we played today? Oh, we played um, Death's Door, and uh, Death's Door was provided by Gold League Ting, so thank you for that, appreciate it. Uh, this is a game that, um, very, very new. Uh, I think it just came out, like, less than a month ago. And it's, it's kind of like an isometric, Souls-like, uh, action-adventure game. Um, and I think everyone at this point knows what I'm talking about, because there have been so many of these games where you, you have a dedicated roll button, you know, a dedicated dodge button, and you, you know, use your, your... Uh, melee attacks or your sword attack or whatever, and then you have a, like a long-range weapon. Um, the thing that set this game apart is I really liked the art direction um, of the game, but I also really, really loved the world building. The premise of the game is that you are a crow and you have to uh, reap the souls uh, of the dead. So you, your job basically in this weird limbo place that you work and there's people at like there's other crows that are working at like typewriters the world building at the beginning is brief but brilliant and i loved it um you have to go into the world uh and you know extract the souls from these people but while you're in there you are mortal so you ha you're it you can be killed while you're in there so you have to be you know super super careful but you get the souls and the souls power the uh, interdimensional portals, these special doors that allow you to go get souls in the first place. So the cycle repeats itself. Um, gameplay was really solid. Playing as a crow is just really cool. I, that, I, that probably sounds kind of stupid, but like, it's just a really interesting idea because so often you're like a warrior or a wizard or something. So just making the character a crow already does a lot for it, in my opinion. Um, there was also a, uh, one of the interesting mechanics is that your ranged weaponry, in order to prevent you from using it nonstop, is uh, you get four shots, and then you can't get those shots back until you start doing melee attacks to an enemy. Rather, for every melee attack, you restore one ranged shot. Really cool way to keep them balanced, so you, you can't just be a ranged character. You're obviously going to want to use ranged attacks because it keeps you away from enemies, but you, it forces you to move in and use melee whenever the time is appropriate. So you might use some range shots and then you have to get in and get some melee attacks in in order to get those range shots back. Really, really cool. And of course it is a soul like so you've got to dodge all over the place if you want to survive. Um, but the map was really cool. I re again, I really, really love the, the art style of everything. Um, at one point, like the whole game was, was isometric in, in one perspective, but at one point I went around a corner and I kind of found like a vague little like secret area and the entire map turned like 90 degrees or whatever to reveal what I had found. And that was just a really cool feeling. I was like, oh my God, I love that. <laughs> that's so neat. So uh, yeah, that's a relatively new game on the market. But um, from what I played, really enjoyed it. And uh, you know, I gotta tell you, it's just one of those things where there's, there's, there's so many games. There's just so, so many games. Uh, my sincerest hope, and, and one of the reasons I continue to do First 20, is I want people to be able to find these games because there's a ton of games. I play so many of them, and I love so many of the, the, the games that I play. And uh, it always means the world to me whenever people take the time to reach out 
in a comment or on Twitter or whatever and say, hey, you know, because of you, because you played this first 20, like I picked up the game and I loved it. Thank you so much. Um, if, if, you, if you take the time to tell me that, I really appreciate that because I love doing first 20. It's, uh, it's so fun for me to try out new games, even on, a, you know, just a little bit each time. Um, and it just means the world to be able to try and curate some of the, the multiple game experiences that are happening down into a, you know, a serviceable dish that people can make decisions for themselves about whether the game would interest them or not. Yeah. Oh, and as a treat, we ended off the stream by playing one match of Pokemon Unite. I told everyone early on, I was like, okay, I'll play one game at the very end. So, uh, so I did. And we didn't win, but we only lost by 20 points. Only lost by 20 points. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Mind you, we only lost by 20 points, and we lost every Dreadnought and Zapdos, and we only lost by 20 points. So we really didn't do that bad. Yeah. I have so much more I could say, but it's it's in the past. Just keep playing the game. There's more, there's more games to play and more to win. Anyway. That's it for today's vlog. Thank you so much for watching. If you uh, were at the stream tonight, first off, thanks. I really appreciate you uh, showing up and hanging out. And uh, I hope that at least one of the games tonight spoke to you. Whether that was uh, the wild, um, you know, I adventures of Omori or the comical findings of Overboard, the tactical nature of uh, Sovereignty, um, the humorous very, very humorous adventure of Destroy All Humans, or um, Death's Door. God. It's so difficult to keep five games in your head. It really is. One of the one of the hardest things I, I have to do when I'm doing these first 20 review vlogs is remember the order in which I played them. The hardest thing in the world. I guess I could write it down, but I just try to remember. I'm like, no, no, you can do this. There's so many times where I'm like, what games did we play and in what order? It's remarkably difficult. Anyway, okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. Let's meet back tomorrow, shall we?